Hello, in this video, I'll give you a walkthrough of Neat Pulse, which is Neat's new cloud-based management and monitoring platform for your Neat devices. So to get started in a browser, browse to Neat's website, neat.no, the NO is for doorway, and then up the top here, click on Pulse, then click on View Plans. So anybody with a Neat device can sign up for Neat Pulse for free. If your Neat devices have been purchased with uh, enhanced support or extended warranty, they will automatically be rolled over to either the Neat Pulse Plus or Neat Pulse Pro plan. But to get started, you click on sign up there for Neat Pulse Starter. Fill in your details and within one to two days, you'll receive an invitation email from Neat that you can click on to activate your Neat Pulse subscription. Uh, so I've already done that. So let's go back into my Pulse tenant over here and I'll actually show you how to invite a user once you have set up your tenant and you'll see the workflow. So this button here is the menu, uh, click on users and you can enter an email address or multiple email addresses. I've got my demo account here. I'm gonna set up my uh, test user as an owner of this account and send an invite. I'll just bring my other browser in here. Uh, we'll see how quickly that email comes through. So this is the email inbox for that email address that I just entered and that's come straight through. So click on that email, click on accept invite. And this user is now prompted to sign in to Neat Pulse. So we support Microsoft SSO, Google SSO, or email address and password. So I have a Microsoft account with this account. So I'm going to click on Microsoft here. And I'm going to authenticate with this Elliot at neat.show test account that I have. So the first time I log in, I'll be presented with the end user license agreement. Scroll down, read that, click accept. And then we have a bit of an overview of what Neat Pulse control gives you. Uh, and we say, got it. And there we are, there's all our Neat devices um, signed in with my test account. It's, a, it's that easy. And so I just heard another email come through. And what that was is once I have signed up and accepted my invitation, I get a new email. If I was to close that Neat Pulse tab, in this email here, click on the sign in button. And that will take you straight back into your Neat Pulse tenant. And what you would do there is just bookmark this URL. Um, and then that, that makes it nice and easy to get back into your Neat Pulse tenant every time. Next, I'll show you how easy it is to enroll an existing Neat device into Neat Pulse. So back in the Neat Pulse portal here, click on add device and give it a, a name for the room. So I'm going to add this back to my Collins Street office. This is going to be on level 11. A naming convention is quite important because it allows you to search using Neat Pulse's powerful search functionality, which I'll show you in a minute. And we can assign a profile as we're setting this up. So this is going to be a production room for me in Australia and it's in Melbourne. So let's set the location there. And then this code is what we use over here on the Neat Pad. So let's go into the system settings on the Neat Pad. And at the very start or front page of the system settings, you can see the menu option here to add to Neat Pulse. And this is where we put this code in. And while we're waiting for that to enroll, it happens pretty quick. Well, there you go. You can see how fast that's popped up. Uh, that happened almost straight away. So we can click close on the neat pad there and exit out of the menu, the system settings. So while we're still setting up the room, we can click on here to add a snapshot. This is a neat bar with a dual screen. So select that image there. Uh, we can add a note. Um, so we could say, oops, let me just click into that. And save that. So that's just a reference there for anybody. Um, we can also see the neat pad requires an update for the uh, Zoom application, I think it is. And so let's click on that now. 
it's telling me the Zoom Rooms controller updated successfully and I'm sitting next to that neat pad and I can see the Zoom app has shut down and it is now downloading and updating. So that'll happen straight away very quickly. It tells you the version we're currently on, the version we're going to go to. And in future, this will be able to be scheduled for out of hours. So currently you would have to do this um, during an out of hours period, during a change control window, uh, because when you click update, that does happen instantly. And you can do multiple devices at a time. If, uh, if you have many devices requiring an update, you can select them all and push the update all at one time. And that update of the Zoom app on the Zoom Room controller took about one to two minutes. And if we click in there now, we can see that both devices are up to date. The next thing I can show you is the status of a room and whether or not it is in use or actually in a video conferencing call with Zoom or Microsoft Teams. If I click into this room here with my neat frame, it's telling me that it has an occupancy of one. The neat sense people counting technology has detected myself in front of it. However, it's not saying that the device is in a call because it's not. So I'm going to join a meeting on that neat frame and almost straight away, you'll see a little notification pop up down the bottom here showing me that it's in a call. There we go. So now that we know at a glance that this device is actually being used in a video call, uh, and same again here, we can see that notification as well. So I'm going to now end that meeting from a neat frame. That status will fairly quickly update. However, the, and there we go, we can see it's no longer in a call. However, we still know there is somebody in the room. So that's quite handy for a remote administrator. Now I'll jump into my neat bar pro room here and run through some more room specific features. Everything is super configurable, super easy to change. Um, you can't really make a mistake. You can just rename the room on the fly. Um, we can see the occupancy and neat sense data here. So we have temperature, humidity, volatile organic compounds and carbon dioxide. We can assign a different profile if you wanted to, if you want to change that to the dev profile and that'll take effect instantly, but you can change it straight back again. So no harm done there. Uh, we have a update button here. If your device was not for, uh, configured for the default automatic updates and you had manual updates configured, you can push updates. You can do a re remote restart at the operating system level. So this goes below the app application running on top of Neat, either the Zoom rooms or Teams. So potentially if the app's having an issue, you could recover the room remotely. Over here, we have a super handy feature called Submit Logs. And what that does is opens up your default email client and it pre-populates an email for neat support. And this is where you would describe the issue you are having that you require support with, and also any troubleshooting steps you've taken. And neat support will be able to remotely obtain the logs for your device and start troubleshooting very quickly for you. If we click on the devices themselves, we can see the neat bar pro with all the IP address, uh, MAC addresses, um, serial numbers. Uh, there we go, serial number there, uh, the, soft, the firmware versions and also all the neat system settings. So anything that's grayed out and you'll see a little a notification here saying it's been locked by the profile. So anything that's grayed out has been configured via a device profile and a device profile is the single source of truth. But yeah, we can see all the neat system settings under there. And the next thing I wanna show you is remote control. This is a super handy feature. And what's happening here is in the room, there is a 15 second countdown. And so a user in the room sees a notification on the neat pad and also on the front of room display. So they could cancel this remote control request at any time. But if no, one ac no action is taken, the default is to allow remote control. And as you can see, we get to see both the center of room controller, the neat pad on the right, and also what's being shown on the front of room display that is connected to the neat bar pro in this case. So you could provide remote support or a white glove service. We've got a scheduled meeting here. We can join that meeting remotely. So I've clicked on join there. And you can see I've got my friends Terry and Taylor in the room. Um, so we can see what's what the camera is seeing in that room, which is great. Uh, once we're in the meeting, we could pull out our little neat slide out menu here to change the framing options. We could turn the neat symmetry feature off if we just wanted to get the overall view of the room, or we could turn on group framing to get a tighter shot of the people in the room. But the preferred view is always neat symmetry because then we can see everyone's facial expressions and have a much more immersive meeting. So we've we'll turned the symmetry back on there. And yes, you just have all the normal meeting controls, a super handy feature to see what's happening and to be able to support your neat meeting room devices. 
So we can end that meeting there and click back. And we can just close that tab to finish our remote control session. Next, I'll guide you through uh, filtering and search. So search is very powerful here in Neat Pulse. You can search for a room, and this is why it's important to have a naming convention for your rooms, because it allows you to search easily for all the rooms you need. So if I wanted all the rooms on level 10, I would type level 10 or level 11, or if I just want all the rooms for Collins Street, and whatever you search for, you can perform bulk device actions here, such as assigning a profile, uh, manually doing updates on those devices. If there was um, manual updates configured, remote restarts, even you can submit logs for multiple devices at once. We can clear that search there. You can search by an IP address or a serial number. Over here, we have our filter icon showing us a status of one device being offline. So you can just click on that to filter only offline devices. Jump in here to have a look at our neat board. Oh, there's President Joe Biden using his neat board in the Oval Office. And we can see the last time this device was online. Um, so again, very handy if we can clear that filter. You can filter by anything. So if you just wanted to get all your neat frames to come up, you could select all your neat frames and again, perform bulk device actions on those neat frames. You can search by device profiles, um, devices, locations, regions, and this device status. Filtering is super powerful. Over here on the left, we have the menu icon. We'll start with audit logs. There is no anonymous access in the Pulse. Everyone is a named user and every action is logged and audited as you can see there. We can see the remote control session started. Settings is where you can rename your Neat Pulse uh, tenant whenever you need or if you need to, and also set up your regions and locations. So once you've set, to set up a new region, you would just type in um, the region here and create. And then once you have your regions, you can create locations uh, and assign those locations to a region. Over here in users, we can see uh, my demo user that I set up before. That was an owner, but you can also set it to be an admin and an admin can be assigned administrative privileges over certain regions. So maybe we just wanted to, this user to only administer Australia and New Zealand, or you can administer everything, which would, in this case would be the same as an owner. But yeah, that's uh, very configurable there if you just wanted region specific admins. Uh, you can enter multiple email addresses here and assign the owner or admin role at time of invitation. Device profiles, I've mentioned uh, before, but yeah, these are the source of truth for all your neat uh, system settings. So anything that's configured here um, will be reflected on the device and locked on the device per this device profile. You can see how easy it is to change. You can turn automatic updates on or off. Uh, this is the neat stable or preview channel to get new firmware. And because this is a production profile, I'd want this to be unstable with automatic updates. Uh, you can see which devices have been assigned to this profile. We can see the rooms there and each room has two devices. And then we're back to devices and we can close the menu there. So that is the walkthrough of Neat Pulse.